Jennifer Dobbs, and Director of Development, Margot Dever. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah thanks for you, having us. Uh, Margot, you've been here before, but Jennifer <laughs> yeah. has been at JC for 18 years, and this is your first time on the show. It is. I'm excited. It's, a good, it's for a good reason, so I'm very excited. <laughs> well, I'm excited to have you as well, because during the pandemic, uh, you discovered as an organization that uh, not everybody was um, going to be able to continue mm -hmm. learning mm -hmm. for a lot of different reasons. Yep. What, what were some of the things you, you found out? We, we, a lot of our students came to us without internet or computers, so that's why they were at Central Campus was for those services and tutoring and things like that. And so when the pandemic hit, President Phelan said, get computers in their hands. So we emptied out our computer classrooms and students were sending in requests as they needed internet and those resources. So we would send them hotspots and laptops and, and get them connected so that they could continue the best they could from home with their education. And we did that within like a span of two weeks. So we gave out lots and lots of laptops and just said, keep, keep with us and we're here from our homes when you need us. And so um, there was an emergency fund at that time too. So there was lots of things that came up People were, you know, losing their jobs and getting laid off and things like that. So, we also were getting requests for extra cash assistance through an emergency fund as well. They were all kind of funneled together. And I noticed, um, as a development officer, one of the, uh, the fundraising goals is to actually get money for for immediate student needs. Mm -hmm. And I've been to some events <clears throat> that the JC Foundation has had. And it's specifically, you know, this we're doing this fundraiser for scholarships for the kids. Mm -hmm. We're doing this fundraiser for basic needs, mm -hmm. for uh, their health, mm -hmm. uh, for any of those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And you don't make any apologies that that's what you're raising money <laughs> exactly, for. Exactly, exactly. I mean, one of the biggest ways that we can ensure that our students are able to complete is by helping them as a whole person not just focusing on the, the narrow aspect of their life that is them being a student, but their whole life in terms of um, making sure that they have things like shampoo and conditioner and uh, laundry detergent uh, so that they're ready to go to class in the morning and, um, and making sure that we are connecting folks with any and all resources that we can to make sure they have stable housing and transportation and all of the things they need to be able to be a successful student and eventually a successful member of our community. I heard a phrase a couple of weeks ago for the first time. I never heard this, but it was being used to describe Jackson College as a hunger-free mm -hmm. campus. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? We're, so through this fund, we started with, with just technology needs and then we seen emergency needs. And as we came out of COVID and came back on campus, we anticipated the needs would slow down and, and they didn't. Um, what we were seeing was people re-entering college, re-entering, trying to find a new path after COVID and they were still struggling with the fallout of employment or losing their homes and things like that. And so um, we would get these requests and we would send them a check. Here's this to help pay your bills. And um, one, one evening we got a request that came in and it simply said, I'm having a hard time doing my homework from my car. I'm living out of my car. Oh, wow. And we, we just kind of paused and went, we, we have bigger issues than a check's going to solve. But we have so many resources and so many talented, amazing, caring people at the college that we paused and we put together mm -hmm. a team and said, we can do better. We can do better than this. And we want to. And that's why we all came to the college, mm -hmm. like people like Margot uh, in the first place. And so there's a team of five of us and a form that students can go to and fill out and they just give us one or two sentences what their needs are. But this, this homeless student, we stopped and paused and we said, we have housing here. Why, do, why does this person need to work out of their car? So we contacted our housing folks and within uh, 48 hours, we had been in contact with a student offered her emergency housing on campus. And within three days, she had moved into campus. We wrote a temporary contract for her. All she asked for was assistance. She had a job lined up. Can you help me until I get my first paycheck and then, then I'll be out of your hair. Mm. Uh, and so she moved in on a Friday, had her three-week contract. Um, in the meantime, we connected her with the Center for Student Success, where we have personal hygiene items for students. We connected her with Hunger Free Campus. Any student who's hungry can go to 10 different locations on campus, get a coupon, go to the Jet Store, go to food service, and get a free meal on us that day. Um, and then we connected her with student employment on campus, got her a job on campus. Um, a month later, she said, 
I, this meant so much to me, I wanna move here permanently. I wanna be a permanent Jackson College student. She's a non-traditional student. Mm -hmm. She's living in our dorms, but now she's a, an employee of ours, a student employee of ours. She's going on to get her nursing degree. Um, and she's just kind of, she's shown us that if we provide the resources, the students will take them, they need them. They're just in, in sometimes in scenarios where they don't know where to go next mm -hmm. for help. And with the team of us, um, we have a financial aid um, lady, her name's Lauren, we call her Mary Poppins <laughs> because <laughs> these student requests come through and, and Lauren combs through all their financial aid and sees where did we miss the scholarship opportunity? Is there financial aid that they didn't have? Mm -hmm. um, and get them in resources with that. So we're kind of pulling all the things that are on campus in one spot so a student just has to hit one uh, connection point and we will get them everywhere. We're working with people like 211 we're starting to meet with to get our students to resources like that. They're outside of things on campus that we can get them help with. Well, it's uh, outside of what anyone would ever expect from their college. What's been the response besides what you just relayed about this particular uh -huh. student for some of the help that you've been able to, to give these folks? It, um, we, <laughs> there was a student the other day, she emailed, need help with my computer. She emailed the next day and said, you know, things have gotten worse. Um, is there any other assistance you can get me? And so we reached out to her with the check and the resources. And the immediate response from her was, this was heaven sent. I had no idea these things were available to me here as a student. Um, we had another student who emailed that she just needed help paying her payment for housing on campus. She had, her family had just recently been in a car accident the week before the semester started. Um, and her mom's a single mother and the one of her siblings was in intensive care at u of m for a whole month and so the mom was there and not working and not helping she just said i just want to help my mom make some of my payments for school and mary poppins lauren <laughs> went through her account and found um, funding to cover her entire tuition um, and that again is things free from us mm -hmm. at the college we gave her additional assistance through the foundation our facilities team got together a care basket of all the cleaning supplies for her dorm. Mm -hmm. uh, Margo got together all the uh, check and some food service things and snacks and just delivered it to her dorm. And, and she and her mother both called and just said, wow. we can't tell you what this means. And so for us, for, you know, I've been there for 18 years for Margo, who's new. Mm -hmm. it, it's such a, a privilege and a blessing to work with people that we, we get these requests and within 24 hours, these kids know like or our families know or non-traditional students know mm -hmm. I'm in the right place and, mm -hmm. and these people care about me and it does uh, the, the staff uh, the teachers the professors they are aware and you get a word about students that might need help from from maybe their their uh, professor or mm -hmm. maybe a, mm -hmm. another student because they're not they don't want to go and ask yeah. for help yeah yeah yeah, and that's that's something that you know we we observed um, with our emergency assistance that sometimes students who really needed help didn't know or or felt too embarrassed to ask for help, mm -hmm. and so we did open up the uh, referral to be able to come from faculty members and from staff so that they could refer a student to us, um, and that way we can start the ball rolling and try to connect them with resources and with help um, even if they're feeling too shy or too embarrassed to ask for it because the biggest thing is we want we want our students to be successful we want them to be able to feel supported and to be able to complete their degree or credential or whatever they're they're pursuing um, and and however we can help them that's what we want to be able to do that's awesome so a week from today, mm -hmm. there's uh, an event I've never heard of. What's, <laughs> what's coming up? Uh, so we're having Paws and Pies. It's uh, President Phelan is, he knows that if we're taken care of, we can help take care of our students. And so we have an event on campus where um, all, of our, all of our employees are coming together and we're starting, we're kicking off a um, personal hygiene items drive. Last year was the first time we had ever done it. And we had just said, hey, bring what you can. And we collected um, $400 and 400 items in, in our very first day of doing it from Jackson College employees just emptying their pockets in the, and going to the grocery store on the way to work. Uh, it was the week before Christmas break, and within that week, all of those items were gone, which showed us we these students 
um, going home, we're going home with nothing. And mm -hmm. so why not go home and feel good about yourself or help out your family or spend that money to mm -hmm. get mom and dad a present this year or yourself or the gas to get home. Let us take care of the personal hygiene items for you. So we're doing it again this year through, a, through this drive and through this event. Um, and Margo has worked with folks in the community to actually help gather these items too. Yeah, so um, we're working with a local uh, majorette's dance team um, they're called the Dollface Legends, and they are putting boxes around downtown. Um, I saw one earlier today uh, right next to Fortress Cafe in the Lean Rocket Lab, and I know there's a whole bunch more that they've been putting out, and the students are um, helping to organize this. They're collecting items all around downtown and at the schools, and then they're going to bring them out to campus on Wednesday, and, um, and we'll collect more and bring everything together, package it up and make sure that all of our students are able to access these. And that's not just the students on central campus, that's also our remote students. We're gonna be putting together some care packages that can go out. And then for the students at our Hillsdale campus and our Adrian cam campus, we'll be sending uh, items down there so that students, wherever they are, our Jackson College students will be able to access those things. That's awesome. So if someone in our audience wants to help, they should seek out one of these uh, donation boxes mm -hmm. around town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as you said, we know there's one at uh, Fortress Cafe across the street from mm -hmm. JTV. And if people wanted to go to Central Campus, yeah. is there mm -hmm. a collection spot there? Yep. Um, so our Center for Student Success, where they offer the tutoring and, and things like that, has kind of become known as the central hub to find help for students. Mm -hmm. And so um, we actually have a, a pantry there of these items. And so no questions asked, it's, it's open all the time. Students can go and get what they need. Uh, we recognize that we also have hours, but we have students that live on campus. So we also have these pantries set up in our housing units for those students who may run out of those things and have other things to worry about besides the things that we awesome. can help Awesome, that's with. great to hear. Thank you for sharing those uh, stories mm -hmm. and uh, for all you guys are doing. Thank you. Good Thank to see you. you. From Jackson College, Student Engagement, Communications, and Technology Manager Jennifer Dobbs.